It is a privilege to be joined today on the summit by Coach Chuck Heppela, who is the head football coach for the Evangel Valor. Coach, a big time win on Saturday. You got a lot of help from the defense, which is a hallmark of the program. But uh, and and Nate Swafford in particular, and I want to talk about him just a little bit later on. But you did what needed to be done to get a win over a very good friends program in conference in divisional play, a top twenty matchup. Coach, 24-21, the final, and you all get the win in Wichita. Before we go any further, please tell us about that win. It was a big one. Yeah, it was it was a, uh, a great win for the for you know our team and our program. And, and uh, obviously, uh, Friends is a very, very good football team and very well coached and, and very disciplined. And so, um, you know, we came out and, um, you know, we, we obviously uh, didn't play as well in the first half as we did the second half. I mean, we were down 14 to nothing. And, and then I just challenged the guys at halftime and just said, we got to finish because we actually moved the ball really well. We just didn't finish. There was some fourth down stops. You know, we got down there on the goal line and, and, uh, and didn't, didn't punch it in. But, um, you know, so and, – and we really didn't have very many limited – we had limited opportunities offensively. Um, I'll just give you an example. The previous week we had 16 drives – this whole game, we had seven drives. <laughs> so we only had seven offensive drives in the first half, four in the second half. We scored on three of the four in the second half, and we had opportunities to score in the, in the first half. We just didn't didn't take care of business. And, and uh, But the defense did a really good job, especially uh, uh, in the second half. And, and, again, really, we finished in all three phases. And, and uh, we always talk about every game, there's five key plays in the game and our team meeting this afternoon, I'll actually go over uh, seven or eight key plays during that game. You know, for instance, uh, you know, we blocked a, a field goal against them. That was huge. Uh, Nate Swafford was the one in particular that, that uh, blocked that. We also had a scoop and score. Nick Alexander, you know, came from the backside, uh, made a tackle and, and uh, swiped the ball out and uh, they fumbled the ball. And then um, Nate Swafford picked it up and took it back to the house. And, and then, they scored a touchdown and had a penalty that uh, that got that called back. And then when they uh, lined up to kick the field goal, that was the one that we blocked. And then and then we had a fourth down, fourth and six that we were able to convert. And uh, we actually didn't really have a play called. We we have a have a call that we make and and tries to pull them off sides. And we pulled them off sides. And our receiver did a good job of making the making the play. And then obviously we had another play where we fumbled the ball offensively. And one of our off- offensive linemen recovered it. And when he recovered it, that was a drive that we continued to, to go down and, and score on. So that was pretty critical. And then, um, obviously, Nate Swafford had another interception late in the game to, to get us on the short field. We were able to drive it down. And then with seconds left, we had to kick a kick a you know field goal. And then there was one second remaining on the clock. We had to line up at a kickoff and get the clock to be able to run out. And they actually threw the ball from one end to the next. We actually squibbed it, and our kicker – probably kicked it just a tad bit too hard for what we really wanted him to do. And so it made that uh, ending exciting, but it was an outstanding game and it was fun to watch and uh, for the fans and a little stressful for the coaches and the players at times. So, yeah. Well, coach. Yeah. And, and following that game along, it, it was one that was, it, uh, it did have some back and forth swings, as you mentioned there, but it was very exciting. And I think that's what we expect now, especially in the Kessinger division with its makeup, the way that it is for, for this season in particular, and more, possibilities for good games on the way. We'll talk about them a little bit later on. Nate Swafford, and you mentioned that, and going back through, I mean, what he did uh, specifically in the second half, of course, the defense played well all the way through, and and, and that was worthy of mentioning. You you said it yourself. But in the second half, that that field goal, which was blocked with field goal opportunity, I mean, that would have put friends up 17 nothing at that point, and Swafford uh, comes away with it uh, and uh, comes away with the, the block on that one. Then the opportunity to scoop and score, Nate Swafford on that one, 48 yards right there, ties the golf ball game at 14 all. The interception near the end really was, I mean, you know, just as, as you mentioned, all those plays that were big. But yep. friends, even after you all had tied it up late, friends was having an opportunity to just bring it right back down the field, set themselves up for that position or to possibly in a posi- be in position to make the field goal at the end. And the interception from Swafford right there was huge. Only had six tackles on the day, too. He's the KCAC Defensive Player of the Week and, and warrants all kinds of attention. We've both been through the stats on Swafford. Talk about his play. Yeah, first of all, just a great kid. He's one of our captains. You know, he's, he's you know a senior this year and just had a tremendous season. And he's just a gritty player, just a hardworking, working 
player. He's he's a coach's kid, and and uh, so has just played really really well on the, on the field for us. He was a quarterback in high school, and then when he came here, we moved into the safety position, and he's been an all conference safety uh, player for us, and and uh, so that move you know proved uh, to be the right move because he's he's done nothing but great things for us on the defensive side. Our defensive staff, you know, Coach Soto and the defensive staff put the, put our guys in the right positions to be successful, and then our guys get out there and execute. We always talk about execution as two things, two things to execute. One, you know, you're creating habits at practice. And when you create habits, that's what creates execution. But then the second one is you have to have belief. And you might say, what do you mean by that? Well, your coach is telling you something and you have to believe that he's putting you in the right position to be successful. Because if you don't believe it, you won't do it. Mm -hmm. And so we ask our guys to believe, you know, what we're doing to set them up and and uh, that's that's how you execute. And, and uh, Nate's a, a perfect example of that. Offense, uh, not quite the factor that I'm sure you wanted it to be. And you mentioned that too. You know, you had opportunities there in the first half, and I appreciate your perspective on that too, as to how many opportunities you get because you play a team like Friends, who's going to run the ball the vast majority of the time. That's going to shorten the game. It's going to make every well, offensive opportunity that much more important. And you were able to capitalize in the second half, read pots through for 283 yards and a touchdown as well. And, and all 24 of your points were scored after the intermission. That's correct. And, and we talked to our team about it all week, about we had to be efficient because we knew that we were going to get limited opportunities compared to other weeks. And uh, certainly because they run the ball, but it surprised me a little bit. They – in their game plan, they decided to um, to run the clock down, and they were trying to make sure that they had the right call offensively. And so, a lot of times, they were snapping the ball with only uh, one to two seconds left on the play clock. And so, when you do that strategically and you hold the ball, uh, it prevents a team like us to be able to have the ball. And so, really, like I said in the first half, we we actually we only punted twice in the entire game. And so, you know, you look at it. I mean, we were pretty efficient in what we did, and. And we were 0 and 3 in the first first half there, and we only punted, you know, one time in the first half. So, so both those two of those three opportunities, we had opportunity to score, and we just didn't take care of business. We we had uh, two fourth down stops that they stopped us. We we actually ran a um, a play action, and we had a a player in the flat, and and uh, we had a tough throw, and and we were able to secure that catch. And then we got down on the goal line and was not able to punch it in. So, so we, you know, we were pleased with uh, the, we knew we were going to move the ball. We just were shooting ourselves in the foot consistently there. And then the second half, we came back out and got four opportunities again. And, and we scored on three of the four. And, and then obviously that, that, uh, you know, the scoop and score, you know, is another scoring opportunity. So there's your four, four scores that we had during the game, three touchdowns, one field goal that makes the 24. And so, uh, you know, big a lot of big plays during the game, and and uh, really it was a uh, it was really a fun fun game uh, to be a part of. We're visiting now with Chuck Hepla from Evangel, the Valor Victors over the Falcons, twenty four twenty one in KCAC Kessinger Divisional play, and Evangel remains undefeated right now, seven and zero on the season. Uh, with big wins in divisional play, we'll talk about that a little bit later on, Coach. I want to mention. Jonah Edwards, because when you get to this point in the game, having someone that you can count on like him is just that much bigger. And Edwards has done, I don't know if I could say this. I, I always say I know how to use the word literally. But, Coach, in this instance, I, I would use the word literally and see how you feel about it. He's literally done everything you've asked him to do because he's perfect. He's 10 for yeah. 10 with field goal attempts. He's 28 for 28 in point after attempts. I mean, could could he do better? He's uh, he's had a tremendous season and, and uh, really proud of him. But, you know, if you think about it, for him to do that, we have to have somebody snap for him. And Caleb Higginbottom has done a really great job. And then his holder, Dawson Mock. Dawson Mock is a, is a receiver for us. That is our starting holder. And then and then obviously you got people up front that got to be able to block for him when he's kicking field goals or PATs. But, um, you know, Dawson Mock, I'll, I'll give him a shout out too because – uh, the the touchdown that we scored and then we had to kick the PAT to tie it up. The snap was a tad bit high. Dawson had to kind of get out of his stance, catch the ball, put the ball back down, and then allow uh, Jonah to put it through the uprights. And so, you know, those are little things that, you know, when people watch the game, they don't realize uh, that that occurred. And obviously if, if he doesn't handle the ball and we don't get it through the uprights, then everybody goes, oh, you know, they know what happened. But, um, you know, those are just little instances that uh, – 
you know, that that is important, important during a game. And the reason why we cover those things is because I'm just reminding the guys, hey, at practice, there's a reason why we practice this stuff. You know, we practice the stuff because it, it physically occurs in a game. And so we want our guys to be able to uh, to be productive and we want our guys to be able to have confidence. Confidence is a byproduct of preparation. And so we want our guys to to prepare well. And and we always talk about in a stressful situation that uh, you always revert back to your fundamentals and your training. And, uh, and what is a stressful situation? Saturday football game. And uh, so that guy's going to revert back to how they train. And so uh, so those are big, big things during the game. But yeah, Jonah has had a has a tremendous season and, and he's a great young man and also a senior for us. And so just really proud to see how he's progressed since he's been here. Also the player of the week, special teams wise in the KCAC as well. I yep. really appreciate that you pointed out all those things that go into it because the finished product is just what, uh, you know, all of us who are looking in from the stands and, and press box, that's what we see most of the time and don't get to see all those other things. So props to all of those other players that made that possible as well. And, and who have, uh, benefited Jonah over the course of this season and his career, 19 consecutive regular season wins now coach dating back to the season finale from a couple of years ago, undefeated through the regular season last year to this point, that is the same, but it's win number 60 for you at the program. And that's a, a pretty good number as well. Nice milestone number. Well, I appreciate it. And you know, what that means is, uh, I've got really good coaches that have worked with me over the years and I've got really good players and, and uh, I'm just very thankful. And, of course, the administration here at Evangel. And, uh, you know, I'm sitting in a brand new facility that we moved in in July. And, um, you know, that we have new offices, new weight room, new training room, new equipment room. Um, and then you can overlook our practice field that will eventually be an on-campus stadium for us here at Evangel. And so, uh, so there's just been a lot of support over the years. And so, you know, a lot of times when, you know, people reference that and, the, and, the, and somebody referenced that on Saturday and said, hey, you know, congratulations on your 60th win. But, but you know, I mean, Jeremy DeSoto has been with me the whole time, our defense coordinator. So, I mean, he's he's won 60 games too. So it's like, you know, it's not like um, – uh, in fact, if I tried to do all this myself, I mean, there's no way I'd win 60 games, you know, when it comes to that. So, um, you know, you know, for, for me, I get the credit for it. But, honestly, the, uh, the credit goes to our players, our coaching staff, and all the people that have coached and played for us over the years. So, so I'm very appreciative of them. The victory over friends, a big, big win for the program. Not only this season, I think just a big win for the program. And you've been able to uh, defeat friends in back-to-back -back years, which uh, says a whole lot because that, again, as you mentioned, is a quality program. But the work's not done by any stretch of the imagination. You have three more weeks in the, in the regular season. And, oh, my goodness, uh, the next couple of weeks are huge. Now, both games there in Springfield, excuse me, in Nixa, uh, both games there in Nixa for the next couple of weeks. But you do at least get to host these two teams Saturday coming up against McPherson and the following Saturday, November 9th, against Southwestern. Both teams who are vying to try to take that playoff spot from the Kessinger as well and still with the opportunity. Yeah, without question. And, you know, all the three remaining games that we have, I mean, all solid football programs, all all solid football teams. And, and uh, you know, we had tight games between all three of them last year. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, McPherson is seven and one. You got Southwestern seven and one. And I think um, I think uh, I think they're uh, Bethel. I think they're five and two, I believe. I haven't, haven't looked that far, uh, either five or two or six and two. I'm not hundred percent. You might actually know better than I do, but, um, they've had, they've had a really good run as well. So, um, so, you know, some really good football teams, but you know, the main thing is that we're working on uh, McPherson this week and, and hopefully our guys will just get out there and execute all week long and then execute on Saturday. All right. Well, we're going to be following along coach. We follow the Valor all season long. It's been a while since we've had a chance to talk. You have to go back to, I mean, you hadn't yet played your spring football game when we were visiting, previewing this season. And to see the new digs there as well, I really thought, and, and just different things this summer, I thought I might have a chance to see the Valor Center by now, but that is also on the list of things to get done in the next few months is to come up there and, and see the new digs. So it looks nice behind you, Coach, and I know that there's more on the way there. But the work's not done for this season on the football field as well. Again, Saturday, November 2nd, as – 
The Evangel will be hosting McPherson. That's going to be at Nixus. So all the Valor fans need to come on out, watch that game, support the Valor as they try to make a push toward another playoff spot. Coach Chuck Heppler, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit. We appreciate your time. And, and again, we'll follow you. Appreciate it. And appreciate, uh, Joey, appreciate you guys, uh, the support you have, and, you know, especially for our level of football and, and for people to get out there and, and show their support for all the teams and, and uh, we can't thank you enough. We sure appreciate it.